I'm really glad to be, I'm, I'm an associate professor here at EPFL and I'm, I'm really pleased to be in this because upskilling never stops. Uh, in my last paper, I used reinforcement learning. In the paper before that, I had a very big data um, project. And the one before that, it was a natural language processing project. And all of those I wouldn't have anticipated doing when I finished my PhD, but upskilling never stops, right? So if, if, if nothing else, take that away um, from today. Um, so I'm an economist, and I'm here to share with you an amazing discovery. Wait for it. Managers decide which ideas are actually allocated resources. Right, shocking, right? Uh, only an economist would come up with this, right? We have a firm grasp on the obvious. Um, what's perhaps not as obvious, right, is that it's actually the, often it's the manager's selection ability uh, that matters the most in terms of the overall performance of, these, of a program of such projects, right? Again, shocking, right? Well, you know, actually, econometrically, that was difficult to, to tease out. Um, so what does that mean? I mean, what does that mean for data science, right? <clears throat> so we're, we're aware of this kind of traditional divide between decision makers, usually those with more gray hair, um, and they're the ones with the money, right? And then we have the technical experts, right? These are the ones with the know-how. And sometimes there's a divide between these. Sometimes it's through training, through, sometimes it's through experience. Um, but they often see this uh, across this divide differently, right? And they see the AI opportunity differently in terms of both the realism of what it can do and the technical basis of what it does. You know, so communication and coordination in this space is particularly difficult, partly because of the complexity, but partly because of the ecosystem in which ML is operating, right? ML is just like this little black box in here, right? But there's so much going on that you have to coordinate within an organization. That means you have to be able to communicate across these boundaries, which means you need the same basic concepts and vocabulary um, to be able to communicate. So this leads to the question, you know, is, in a sense, is your firm data science ready? You know, what does that mean, right? Like, who prioritizes the objectives and assesses the risks? Who selects the vendor or the outside platform? Uh, who evaluates the results or maintains the solution once it's delivered? Who even recruits the new employees? It's, it's, some of this is a chicken and the egg problem, which is you, you want to hire somebody, but you're not sure the questions to ask during the hiring process, right? So to be truly data science ready, more upskilling is going to have to happen on the managerial side. Um, it can't happen entirely from just hiring in new on the technical expertise side. So how do you become data science ready? Right? Well, so we need to upskill a broad range of executives, managers, professionals, engineers, uh, domain expertise, um, so that they share the same uh, vocabulary. Right? So they know what a bias variance trade-off is. Um, and they know how to evaluate models. Um, well, there are a lot of paths to this goal, right? We, we could all we could go take Coursera courses. Uh, you can come to AMLD, which is a good good step. Uh, of course, EPFL offers the Extension School, which is uh, another online offering that um, Marcel runs. Uh, this is a good option. Uh, I'm here to tell you about DSFM, the Data Science for Managers program. Uh, we run this here in the Polydome, um, and you know I'm basically here to say that it's it's time to go back to school. And that there is a case sometimes to physically go back to school. Not always, not for everybody, but for some people there is. Um, so EPFL is now offering uh, two continuing education courses in this space. One is a two-day executive uh, fast track. Here we get to sit around the nicer conference table, have coffee at the table, and there's more time for discussion. Executives do like to talk more. Uh, and this is offered four times a year. The next one is uh, full but we have three more coming up. We also offer a five-day technical boot camp. And this we offer three times a year. Next one's in March, it's filling fast. Now why take a class, right? In person at EPFL. That might be, that might be intimidating for some people, especially if you've forgotten your math, right? You have this loose association that there's gonna be a lot of math at EPFL, right? Well, it, as an economist, I like to think of this as a commitment mechanism. In a moment of weakness, you can sign up for the course. And then you're showing up, right? And then in five days, between 8.30 in the morning and 7 at night, straight through, you're going to be put through an incredible uh, progression in a very short amount of time. So the commitment technology is, is part of it. 
Um, uh, part of it is also that this is specially adapted, anticipating that you probably have forgotten your math, right? And so we're doing this in a much more visual way, something that's more appropriate for um, people that have been out in the work world for a while. Um, you also get access to, to professors. You know, in the boot camp, we have these interactive lunches where we break into small groups and you team up with a professor and you go off and have lunch. So maybe you'll end up with David Atienza and go do IoT stuff or something like that. So you'll have a, a chance to kind of connect with some of the professors here. Um, I want to emphasize, though, that these are hard and challenging courses. When I first came up with this and, and ran it by uh, the powers that be, they said, you know, you might not want to say hard and challenging. You know, maybe people won't want to show up. And, um, you know, I don't believe that. I think hard and challenging is important, and that is, that's part of what we offer in this mix. So the two-day fast track, we run through all the core um, methods at a very high level, but then we switch to solution strategy and transformation issues in day two. In the five-day boot camp, we go through it all, from exploratory data analysis through basic models, through traditional ML, all the way through to neural nets, and on to reinforcement learning at the end. And you'll actually program up some solutions for these. Um, which is a pretty tall order for five days. But you won't be alone. Um, uh, you'll have support. Part of what we do offer is in the practical sessions, this kind of one-on-one, -on -one, um, uh, being able to work with TAs through, through parts of this. So with that in mind, um, uh, please, if you want more information, it's at dsfm.ch, and I'll be around afterwards and happy to answer questions. Thanks.